In 2012, Benetton released this radical new hull and boat, Oceanis 41. And in 2015, they evolved the design into an Oceanis 41.1. And then this year, they released this performance version. Meet Hugo, Benetton Oceanis 41.1 performance. Today, we're going to do a boat tour. Let's go inside first. Okay, starting from the inside, Inside is this open design where the front cabin is part of the living room, which is perfect for us and we love it. Heading bow is normally reserved for bigger boats and was one of the biggest consideration when we chose this boat. Only downside of having it being part of the living room is that you always need to have the bed nicely made. But I have a me for that. Thanks babe. We went for this light oats and white panel option because it feels more modern and it creates a sense of space. It was an option we probably didn't need to tick, but we're glad we did. I like that the front cabin is very well ventilated with three hatches. And we have these nice big windows which I haven't seen in any other boats. There are USB charging ports and reading lights in the bow which is also very handy. And I love these lights. Again, an option? but it creates really romantic mood. I've heard people say that. See what I mean? Cabin space is very good also. There's, um, this side's got the shelves, and then that side's got the hanging space. And underneath the bed, there's this pull-out drawer, you can see. Now we move into the living room. So we have the nav station room with Good size storage for the laptop and it means bits and pieces. We have the chart plotter, VHF and stereo here to keep an eye out on things when we are down below. And on the side, there's the electrical control panel. The living room is this wraparound lounge. It can be converted to a bed when we watch movies or as a guest bed. Coming. There is storage underneath all the seats and behind these cushions, which is perfect for stocking up. And there's a small pantry cupboard here. And the shelf for keys and all the temporary items. And I love this mirror because it again follows the theme of having a sense of space. The kitchen is super functional as well. The stove is on a gimbal. Okay. So we can still make tea and bake stuff when the boat is healing. This is the bench top. It has a fridge with top access. Storage all along the top. And we have this large sink with a mixer tap and a seawater tap. The seawater tap is a must if you don't have a water maker on board. We usually wash the dishes with sea water and rinse with fresh water. Another option we had to take, but this little device saves us tons of water. On the left here, I mean pot side here, <laughs> is the mini storage room, or I may call it his room, um, the, where we keep all the filmmaking equipment, all the battery charging, oh. jackets, wet weather gears, first aid kit, and there's an internal access to the Lacerettes where we keep our folding bikes, our engine, folded dinghies and some of our safety equipment. Coming to the other side is the guest bedroom with a hanging locker 
But now I'm keeping all my dresses here. So there's a nicely hang and same mood lighting as in the front cabin, which is very good and cabin space everywhere. And obviously there's USB charging ports over there as well. And very, very ventilated. There's a window here and a hatch up here. Okay. And now we move to the bathroom. Bathroom has a separate shower. Toilet is comfortable. And these angle mirrors work well. Again, storage here too. Under the companion way is a technical compartment with the engine, which is well insulated. This companion way was another big consideration when buying this boat, which if you notice is slightly offset. But more importantly, it is gentle sloping and it is really easy to go in and out. Let's go outside. The tick on the seats is sanded, but not on the floor. So that was an option. If you ever see a boat without tick here, it always looks dirty. So this was another one of those options we probably didn't have to tick, but glad we did. The outside cushions are an option, and so is this extra clutch. But the rest of the stuff you see here is all sanded. These seats are big enough to sit three on each side. Super comfortable when we're sailing. I like this table which can convert into a full table when having meals. The transom folds down and is probably my favorite part of the boat. It extends and brings us closer to the water. There's a bathroom ladder, it is on hydraulic struts and it's really easy to pull up even though you waste tons. And the Dodger and the Beanie are of course an option. And we love this LED light here. We use it at night when we have dinner. There are some special features that make this boat a performance model. The adjustable backstay, adjustable jeep cars, the German main sheet system. Moving to the front of the boat, the big black carbon sails, taller masts, and dive from rigging are all part of the performance version. The tow rails make it super safe to move around when the boat is healing. And we come to the bow. You can see a beautiful flat deck with enough room to sunbake or do some stretch exercise. At the front, we opted for a double roller. An option, of course, a bit of a mask for cruising boats, which also has an attachment point for our spinning car. Part of the performance version is also a flag deck furler, which gives us a bigger front carbon sail. The only other option which you don't see here is a folding prop, which we thought had to be ticked. And the commissioning team also added a spinning car pole for diamond sailing and all the bits and pieces to go with it. Another thing we thought was a mask are some solar panels. Even though Amir had to sell his kidney for that. But at least we got it now. And one last thing, it comes with a pretty awesome backyard. Yeah.